Before I can cut the back of the frame off, I need to locate critical points along the frame, and those are suspension points, rear bumper mounting locations, bed mount locations, and any bump stops that I need to take in consideration. And I need to reference those off of known points on the good part of the frame, which are going to be the four cab mount locations in the middle of the frame. Along with that, I had it in the back of my head that I wanted to remove the torsion bar suspension in the front and replace it with my own design coilover system. And keeping those things in mind as I was trying to figure out how I exactly was gonna measure everything, I figured the best thing for me in the long run is to create a 3D model of the entire frame. I work much more efficiently in front of my CAD package, so designing things like the jig for the back of the frame and then creating suspension components for the front would be really easy for me to do in front of the computer. And that allows me to use my engineering tools to test them and make sure that they'll be able to handle the loads and the forces that I will see in the real life. And it gives me a good feeling of I have a good design before I actually start making anything. So we're going to start the process of pulling measurements off of the frame and creating a 3D model of the entire thing. I've already spent the time setting up a way to take measurements off of the frame. The first thing is I created a central datum. And this is a location that I can always refer all measurements back to. That datum is defined by a speed square that is clamped to the side of the rail. And that measurement is pulled 30 inches from the back of the front cab mount bushings. That speed square will not leave the frame until I am 100% done with creating the 3D model of the frame. That way I can always go back to it and reference new measurements off of that same point and when I put it in the 3D model, I'll always have it in the right location, give or plus a sixteenth of an inch. From that datum, I've gone through and I've put marks on the frame going forwards and backwards just at what I thought were critical locations. Before or after bends, hole locations, mount locations, things like that. And I've drawn a line in the Sharpie and I've also written down the dimension. And the last thing for the first set of measurements that I am taking is I have a laser level that shoots across the frame along that 30 inch plane and I have the horizontal bit of it just randomly set. And what that will allow me to do is use a tape measure and measure down from the laser level down to those important parts along the frame and I will write all that information down. And once I have all that information, we can move to the computer and start entering that information into sketches and start creating one plane of the frame. That went much better than expected. I have 32 points along the frame from front to back. I've double checked and triple checked them and everything seems to work out really well. I had an idea to use the triangle magnet, one of these, and I started placing it along the frame on the parts that I had already marked out along with additional parts to double check my length from that datum along the middle of the frame. And everything was within a sixteenth of an inch and that's really all that I can ask for with the process I'm using. So now that I have all these points we're going to go into my office and we're going to start up a part file in Inventor and I'm going to start plotting everything along. I have comments which are rail locations and which are mount points and other locations so in a couple minutes I should have a general idea of how well I captured the frame. If it looks like I made any mistakes I can come back out here and double check my work. And once I know that everything looks good, we can move on to the next step of creating a 3D model of my frame. Here we are in front of the computer and we will begin by plotting all the points we measured inside the first sketch. The first thing I need to do is create the crosshair of the laser that we used. And I know that was 12 and a quarter inches above the datum. 
So from the origin of the sketch, I'm going to draw a line and then add the dimension. From there, I'm going to create 10 points and then add the Z dimension along the frame that I had marked out. Now that I have all those points laid out, I will start adding the dimension of all those points down from the laser. Now that I have all those points defined, I can define the upper profile of the rail. And to do that, I'm gonna use a combination of lines and arcs. I can use a spline if I want to, but I have a feeling the result that I'm gonna get from that is not gonna be exactly what I'm looking for. I have a little bit more control over the lines and arcs and defining it that way. And for this process, I feel like there's a little bit of artistic freedom to get it. It'll come out to be extremely close, probably within a 16 to a 30 second of an inch from what's really out there. And for my purposes, that's acceptable for now. So I'll just continue to go ahead and play with these arcs, delete, remove, change, tweak, and eventually I will get a profile that I'm happy with. Once I'm happy with the profile, I'm gonna go ahead and add points below each of the measurement points because I'm gonna go out and measure the height of the frame and then come back and enter that information at another point. And once I'm done with that, I'm gonna do the exact same process for the front of the frame, add the Z coordinate and then add the Y coordinate and then create the frame profile with lines and arcs and that will give me the top of the frame. A few moments later, the frame is much more detailed than it was. The last time you saw, I got into a rhythm where I was just running back and forth between my computer and the frame with the tape measure, with the level, and with my calipers, and just double checking and triple checking everything. And the frame profile is basically done. More and more details will be added to this as time goes on, but this is where we are at this point. So now that the sketch is done, we can exit out of it, go back to the ISO view, and zoom in so it looks nice. And now the next thing we need to do is create the surface for the top and bottom of the rail. And that is done by using the extrusion tool. We're going to pick the top line, and I know that the frame is 41 and a half inches wide, and then I'm gonna divide that too, so it's only half. I'm going to share my sketch. I'm actually going to edit my view as well. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing for the bottom profile. Extrude, surface, select. It already has the same dimension, hit okay. I can hide my sketch, and this is the top and bottom of the frame rail. And now the next part is to make the outer part of the frame. So this is the side profile I just made really quick just to kind of finish this process. I need to move the frame around and set up a new coordinate system on it so that I can measure the points off of the center of the frame to get this, but for now this'll, this'll do. Um, so again, I have a sketch. I need to extrude a surface out of it. Time, I'm just gonna do a distance equal, and we'll do 20. 20 looks like enough, okay. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is an offset from that side plane I just created. So select quilt, select this. We're going to go 2.5 inches on the inside and hit apply as well. So now we have four surfaces that will make up the sides of the frame rail. I'm gonna go ahead and quickly trim all the sides I need to that will just leave a box. Now we will go ahead and stitch all of them together. We're going to add a fillet to all of the edges. 
We are going to thicken. We're going to thicken the entire thing. We're going to make it 0.125. We're going to zoom and make sure that it's on the inside. This way is going outwards, this way is going inward. You hit apply. We're going to hide the faces. Now we're going to do a little bit of mirror magic. We're going to mirror the body. We're going to do the mirror plane. We're going to hit OK. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to turn the sketch back on. We're going to do an extrusion. We're going to tell it to be mid-plane or symmetric. We're going to give it 42 inches length. We're going to hit OK. We're going to visible and we're going to set home again. And there we have it. The first part of creating a digitized version of the frame for my 1989 truck. From here, we will be going into more details about the suspension, adding brackets, adding bump stops, adding motor mounts, adding cab mounts, adding brake line locations. When I'm working on things and creating parts for this, I know exactly where important components are and we can make sure we design around them. So I just want to say thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the little bit of CAD work that I showed. In the next couple videos with the truck will probably be more of the CAD work developing this model. Um, if you want to support the channel, I left some information down in the description. Go ahead and read that. And on that note, go out and do something fun, do something enjoyable, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.